Watch us as we transform this place into a 5,000 capacity fish farm. guys so the first thing we decided to do was um, the farmer chose to barricade the place with this metal and then also with um, this mesh what he's trying to do is to secure the area to prevent people from having easy access into the farm we told you this is a 5,000 capacity fish farm and so we came here we decided to level the ground and then we set up this tarpaulin this tarpaulin is an 18 by 10 foot space and it's going to culture 1,000 pieces of fish at the end of the production cycle. We decided to sink a borehole and then right after that, we decided to give each tank a one inch pipe as water inlet. As part of it, we decided to also give it two outlets so that it will be easier for water to move out of the pond. We decided to also perforate the tanks so that it, it will be easier for water to move out, but then the fingerlings will not be able to move out of the tank. So we set up five of them. And so in this entire space, we are looking at a 5,000 capacity. In this 5,000 capacity, I am very much happy and I'm proud of the work we've done over here because even at the end of the day, the farmer himself also says he's happy with the work that we've done over here. Today, we are here to stock with all the fingerlings and then also teach them how to take care of the fingerlings in terms of the feeding, the daily farm management practices, among other things. So what we decided to do over here was uh, we made sure there was some water in the pond. The water has been in the pond for a minimum of three days. That is because we knew there were, be there were some plumbing works that were being done and then also we wanted to make sure that we checked all the leaks. And so the next thing we decided to do is we introduced the fish, but then before you put the fish inside the pond, the idea is to make sure that the temperature in the pond is not different from the temperature for the water in which we have the fish inside. And so what we decided to do is we got some salt water and then we sterilized the entire tank or the container in which we have the fish then we slowly drop it into the fish pond, allow it to wait for like 15 to 30 minutes um, so that the temperature in terms of acclimatization will be easier for the fish. So to help in being able to do this, we decided to let the farmer get for himself a blue lab combo meter. 
And what we are going to use this to do is to be checking the pH and then the temperature among other nutrients regularly. And so when we came here, we decided to test each and every pH of every single pond. The pH that we're looking for was between 6.5 to 8 on a maximum. And so the range is what we are looking at at the end of the day. The next thing we also decided to do is uh, with the temperature. Now we didn't want a difference more than five degrees Celsius because it's going to worry the fish at the end of the day. So as you can see, we decided to test each and every one of the pond to make sure that the pH and then also the temperature is okay before allowing the fish to swim into the tanks. Now, after making sure that the pH and then the temperature in the pond and then also in the tank for which we have our fish inside is almost equal to that of the pond, then now we can allow the fish to swim into the tank. So as you can see, we are just um, allowing them to swim into the tanks. We are not just pouring them vigorously, just allow them to swim. And then the next thing we'll do is to catch our statements from the owner of the farm. Hello, Yadi. Yes, sir. How are you? Ah, doing good by the Lord's grace. We thank God. We thank and you? God. I'm also very fine. I'm also very fine. Mm -hmm. So finally, your project has been completed. Yeah. And um, how do you feel about it? Very excited. It's just like a groom expecting the bride. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's nice. So that's the nice. arrival of the bride. All right, all right, all right. So um, currently we've been able to stock these uh, ponds. We have about 5,000 of them. Um, why did you choose to even do catfish farming in the first place? Knowing very well that you don't even live in Ghana. <laughs> and so why do you want to even start this farm? Yeah, one day my, uh, we were in the US and my wife just came to me and said, <clears throat> He's watched a video okay. of uh, a company called Lackman Farms. Yeah. Is it Farms? Or yeah, Lackman? Farms. Farms. And she feels we could jump into it. Okay. She, so she was able to sell the idea to me. We planned coming to see what we can do. Even she wanted the project to be started before we come. But I, I insisted that we should be here so that we see everything from the beginning. Yeah. So we came down and contacted Lackman and saw Lackman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we came to an agreement that we should have the project. Okay. In fact, they did not waste time at all. And uh, what you see here is their product. We have five of the ponds, each to contain about 1,000 fishes and uh, in order to secure the place. In fact, the whole area here was bushy. Yeah. Total bush, plantain, guava, mangoes and everything. So we decided to approach and cut down everything in order to have a place where we can grow vegetables and other things so that we can utilize the wastewater. In fact, if you look around, the wall was also very short. Yeah. Everyone walking outside could see what was going on in here. So yeah. we decided to extend the wall yeah. to protect it and uh, in, to give it a little bit more protection so that people cannot walk around to put their hands in their ponds. We decided to fence it with this wire uh, metal over there. So in short that is all about it and we are really pleased with the work done so far. Yeah. We took delivery of the fingerlings today yeah. and very very excited yeah. to see what has been done. Okay. We want to harvest the wastewater from the ponds to utilize it for the vegetable farm. Okay, so, the, the, the last question will be that uh, what's the vision of the farm? Uh, in fact, uh, my wife plans that in a year's time we should have, do an extension. Okay. Now we are going for 5,000. We may go for 10,000. Yeah. And she wants to have a kitchen, or do we call it a kitchen, where we can even... A grill. Uh, a grill where we can smoke the fish. Yeah. Because we know that 
the smoked ones sell yeah. faster and it's a bit more expensive than the raw one. Okay. So that is the vision that in a year's time we should have to expand. Okay, finally, um, for people like you who are outside of Ghana and they are thinking about something to do in Ghana or something in relation to agriculture, what's your final message to these kind of people? Uh, my message is that they shouldn't give up. Yeah. There are a lot of things that can be done over here, yeah. especially in this fish farming. It's very, very good to have it. And uh, so that once a while when you come down, the, the, the joy of seeing the fishes and everything is even enough, okay. apart from the financial uh, benefits. Okay. It's really, from all that we've learned and seen through videos and other things, it's a lucrative business. Thank you very much, sir. It's been nice having you with us. And we'll train your people and then also make sure that from time to time we make this farm work. Thank we you. We also much appreciate all the support that Salute. you've given us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you too. So as you are the farm manager for this entire pond. What I'm going to show you is going to help you to take care of them every single day. Initially, I told you how many feed you'll be giving them every single time, right? Okay. And then we measured it. So the next thing to do is when you come, you do not come and pour everything inside the pond at a go, but then you do it gradually. Okay. You understand? So in, a, in a, something like this, you can divide it into two. First one, wow. let them finish eating the, everything that is on top of the pond before you introduce Another the one. second one okay. as well. You understand? Yes, sir. The next thing you are going to be doing is um, when you pour the first one and then you realize that your fish is not eating, you don't need to continue one. feeding them. Thank you, sir. Reason being is um, if they have a problem, if there's stress in the pond, they are not going to eat. And so putting in extra feed is going to contaminate the water. And then whatever disease or whatever problem that is stopping the fish from eating, will now spread to other fish as well. Okay. You understand? Okay. Um, in this particular pond as well, when you are changing your water, make sure that since we are going to be feeding them at 8 a.m. and then at 4 p.m., you give them this quantity a.m. and then you give them the same 4 quantity 4 p.m. as well. Now, since you are going to be changing the water, you are going to be feeding them around 8 a.m., then if you have to change water, you make sure you finish changing the water and then make sure that they have one hour to feel free in the new water before you come and feed them. Okay. Which means that if you're supposed to feed them at eight and you're changing water today, then by 7 a.m. you make sure that you have finished changing the water totally. Okay. And so if it's going to take you, let's say 30 minutes to change this one, then it means by six o'clock, the changing of the water has started. started. And then, by 6.30, everything is gone. From 6.30 to 7, 7 o'clock, you have new water being introduced into the pond. So that when you feed them, they'll be able to continue to eat. Okay. You understand me? Yes, sir. Now, as I have said, if you face any problem at all in the pond, let me know. Okay, sir. The next thing we are going to be doing is every single day, you are going to be taking records in the farm. Okay. The records you are going to be taking is, um, first of all, what time are you coming to feed them? feed them? So the time of the feeding. Now, when you were changing the water, did you find any fish dead inside as well? And then you have some testers over there, the, the Blue Lab tester. Okay. So you'll be checking the temperature and then the pH amongst other things as well. Okay. Now, I would invite you to come for training. Okay which is part of the package that we give to this farm. Thank you. And so when you come for the training, you will learn other things as well. Thank and you, then you'll be able to run this farm you, properly. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. And um, both of us will work together to make this farm a success. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. I think I have a question. Even though we are talking about feeding, you mentioned changing of water. <clears throat> Do we have to empty the entire water and put a new one? Yes, you can. And then, uh, so there are two ways of changing water. Okay. There is the 50% by 50%. That is 50% um, in the morning and then 50% in the evening. Now, because of the way this fish can make the water very dirty, normally we like to flush everything out. In flushing everything That's out, okay. no. In flushing everything out, what you do is you drain the water mm -hmm. almost totally. 
almost. And then you allow new water to enter into the tank. As the new water is entering into the tank, because of the slope that we gave it, the new water will try and wash a bit of the dirt. And then with the new running water, it will take the dirt out. You understand? So what we are going to be doing is uh, for the next one week, um, for the next two weeks actually, Okay. every single day, the time you come and feed them, you take a video and you send to me. Every single day, you do that for the next two weeks. If eating, if you put the food on it. Every single morning, when you wake up, before you feed, you make sure that you take a video of whatever thing is in the pond, okay. and then you send it to me. Okay, so sometimes I'll ask you if there is a need for us to be able to change the water, okay. if there's a need for us to do anything, I'll be able to monitor it for okay, you sir. as okay. Thank well. You. Thank you, sir. So the next thing we are going to be doing is, um, at the end of everything, we'll give you a sheet, okay? And that sheet is your record sheet. Okay. So every activity from every single pond, you can record it okay. in the sheet. Okay, sir. So that when it is time for us to come and uh, monitor what's happening in your farm, because we'll come back again, um, we'll be able to first of all look at what is in the sheet, and then we'll be able to compare it with everything over here okay. as well. Okay. Thank you. I'll also see you in our training, okay. and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay, sir. The net we have here is going to prevent not just leaves from entering into the fish pond, but then also it's going to prevent birds from being able to pick some of the fingerlings. In some farms that we visited, even in my own farm, I've been able to realize that birds do come and then they harvest some of the fish. And so we have a net here to prevent any kind of bird from being able to enter into the pond. Also, in cases where the pond may overflow, since this one doesn't have an overflow tank, uh, the net is also going to hold the fish so that even in the situation where there's an overflow, there's no way you would have your fish being out of your pond. And there you have it. A 5,000 capacity fish farm has been fully set up for this particular client. If you want a farm like this, just reach out to us. We would first come, do a feasibility, tell you the quantity you need to be able to stock and then we'll tell you all of the details that you would need. Within a week, we come, we set up your pond for you and then we are good to go. And so if you want anything like this, you can reach out to Latman Farms. Our contact is always displayed at the bottom side of the video and then also in the description section. If you think you have received any value from watching today's video, we'll entreat you guys to just subscribe and then also like and share our videos to other people. Also, there is a major event happening in Ghana and that is the Aquaculture Exhibition 2023. This is one of the biggest aquaculture events in this country. It is happening on the 26th and 27th of April 2023. If you would like to join this event, also in the description section, I'm going to make sure the link will be there for you to register. For any of you guys who is going to join the event through this particular link, I would entreat you guys that upon filling the form, it will ask you of the organization, you can just put in the bracket Latman Farms, so that when you come to the event, we will be able to segregate everybody who came through Latman Farms, and then we have a nice package for you guys as well. This event is an event where we are going to have all the industry players in the aquaculture chain being available. We are talking about the ministry, we are talking about the universities, we are talking about the fish feed producers, we are talking about the major farms and other ideas and other innovative things that people are doing in the aquaculture space. I would entreat all of you guys to make sure that you register and you will see me and I will see you there as well. See you on our next episode. Bye.